Have you ever wondered why payment screens always warn you not to click submit twice? What's really happening behind that button? Today, we're gonna talk about asynchronous APIs. Before we dive in, when we say async API, that can refer to the async API specification, which is just one of the standards for documenting asynchronous APIs. We'll be talking about the broader concept today, which is any API that doesn't tie up your application while it waits for a response. Let's start with a quick refresher of synchronous APIs. This is like when you walk into a cafe and order coffee. You're gonna be standing there waiting until your coffee is ready. With synchronous APIs, your app sends a request and waits for a response before that thread can continue. Most REST APIs documented with OpenAPI follow this synchronous pattern. It's great for quick operations, but can be problematic for anything that takes a long time. So what if I don't wanna wait for my coffee and I order it ahead of time through an app? When I do that, I place the order, I get a confirmation number, and then I go about my day until I see that it's ready. Let's look at an example of this in Postman. I immediately get a response with an order number, but I don't have my coffee yet. When I check the status in the app, here's the request that grabs that for me. This pattern is perfect for event-driven architecture, where your system responds to events as they happen. GitHub's API is a great example. When you create a pull request, it's created immediately, but all the automated checks and CI-CD pipelines run asynchronously in the background before it actually gets reviewed. And we can pull the status to see the progress. And this isn't the only way to implement an async API. We've been looking at polling patterns over HTTP, but if, for example, you're implementing push notifications for your app, you might use protocols like WebSocket for real-time data, where the server pushes updates to you. So to sum it up, use synchronous APIs when you're doing basic CRUD operations, and those operations are quick, like a few seconds or less, or you need the response before the app will do anything else. Use asynchronous APIs when you're managing long-running processes, like file uploads or processing data, Operations depend on external services like payment processing, location-based matching, or fetching from social media. You're handling high traffic, and it's not practical to keep connections open, like a ticketing site where thousands of people are, are buying tickets at the same time, or when you need to give users immediate feedback. Remember the submit payment example from earlier? Here's what's happening. You get instant confirmation that your click was received while payment processing happens in the background. So if you click twice, you pay twice. The key is to use both synchronous and asynchronous APIs strategically to give your users the best experience possible. Don't make them wait if they don't have to. If this helped clarify async APIs for you, don't forget to like and subscribe for more API content. Thank you for watching.